holy crap, everybody, what the heck was that? We just got the end of season two. Now the drop in season three stuff is basically a bunch of preview pages for what they're going to be doing next. So I'll explain what's going on. Just like the footage says, the episodes will be dropping next year, so be sure to subscribe to get everything if you're new to the channel. They said that it's going to be way more episodes, though, because they'll be doing the Uprising arc, and they'll have to cover way more material than they covered during this condensed run. So it sounds like they've already been in production for a while, or they had plans going into Season 2 how they were going to handle Season 3, which I think was great. I love the way they ended that, especially with the reveal of Aaron in the Founding Titan. So if you don't know what that is, I'll explain in a minute. It's a bit of a history lesson, but if you want to read the next arc in the manga, it starts with chapter 51 and goes all the way through 70. So that's a lot of material. That's why they're saying it's going to be double the episode count. But it just builds on the big reveals of this arc. So you learn that these titans used to be the people of Connie's village. You learn who Historia really is. You learn about her bloodline. You learn about the origins of the Titans. You start learning about the Titan Wars and why it is that people went to Paradis, how the walls were built. It's sort of pulling the wool back from the big WTF season one where you're like, oh my God, there are these Titans attacking people. It's almost like the Walking Dead with giants. And then slowly it turns into more of a fantasy Game of Thrones story that goes back thousands and thousands of years. So if you watch the animations at the beginning and at the end of episodes, that basically tells the entire history of the world. So if you look at them really closely, you can see how they tell the story of how the original Queen of Eldia found this organic material, used it to create the founding titan, then used that to dominate Eldia, and they would pass it through the royal bloodline. So you could create other titans, and you could control them using this, but only people in their family. About 1,700 years after that, the king at the time grew tired of fighting all these titan wars, so he left to create parodies, used the titans to create the walls. That's why there are titans in the walls, because they help build them. They're also a security measure, too. But when he left with the founding titan, things only got worse, so it raised the world. And you learn about the other powers that the founding titan has, most notably memory control. So that's how he could make everybody forget how the walls were built, and what the history of the world was. So the Titan Wars that you think have been only going on for the last hundred years or so have actually been going on for thousands of years. So the next big arc is all about Aaron, Historia, and their group deciding what to do with that information and how they're going to overthrow the corrupt government. The Great Titan War was something fought with a nation called Marley. They're basically like the Nazi Germany of the series. So they take possession of a bunch of the original Titans and it turns the tide of the battle. So that's where the walls come in really handy. So in addition to restoring Historia to the throne of Paradis, Aaron also has to deal with all these external forces too that start to manifest later in the story. The reason that Aaron is able to control the founding Titan, even though it doesn't seem like he's part of the royal family like Historia, is because he comes into physical contact with Dinah Fritz's Titan form, and she's the first wife of Aaron's father, who also had another son that I'll explain at the end of the video, because he was like that last big reveal. So I'll explain who Zeke is in a second. So you have Historia and Aaron that could both control the founding Titan. So you'll see that play out, but let me know what you thought of season two so far. I feel like they've gotten to all the really cool reveals now, like you've seen some cool shit. Now we're going to tell you what it means and then subvert your expectations by showing you that none of that really matters because there's so much bigger stuff that's happening. You're part of something that's so much grander and so much older. You're left shattered by Han's sacrifice, trying to avenge Aaron's mother, but unable to do so. And all you can think about is Aaron activating the Founding Titan. Definitely one of the best moments of the finale. Like they want to leave you on a high moment even though it's really WTF because you're watching people you care about just get ripped to shreds and eaten by the other Titans. And then we got to talk about Mir flipping sides saying that everything she's done has been for the benefit of Pistoria. She's been one of the most interesting characters this season and it's going to be fun to see Aaron get really pissed off about her. Historia cares about her and recognizes what's going on, but everybody else does not. Everybody else hates the shit out of her. But there's so much going on with the warriors of Marley, Reiner, Berthold, Mir, Historia. It's going to get way crazier before it slows down. So if you need to catch up, then now's a good time to go back and rewatch the episodes or reread the manga, whichever you want to do.
So the big teaser at the end when he says, not yet, that's Zeke Yeager. He's Aaron's half-brother from a different mother, the one that Aaron struck that enabled him to control the bounding titan. Now, he also has the coordinates, so that's the other part of the equation, and that is what Zeke is after. So when he says, not yet, he's also in control of Bertolt and Reiner, so he's sort of like the big boss behind those two crazies that you've seen all season long this year. So you get a little tease for the Beast Titan, then he comes back at the end like, oh, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you in a little while. Very nice antagonistic, but if it wasn't clear, he's part of the forces of Marley. So now it's more Marley versus Paradis. It's become more clear. It's less Titans versus Paradis, and it's more about that other external force, basically the Nazis of the series versus our heroes. But if you have any special requests for bonus videos, leave them in the comments below. There's going to be new Game of Thrones coming next. I'll try to post that as quick as possible. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.